since employees are typically uh, close to the process, it is important that they understand the why behind the change and participate in creating the new process. So employees they need to participate. And, uh, apart from communicating about the change, you need um, if, uh, yeah, apart from communicating the change, you need to get them involved. They should be able to tell you uh, to uh, to put in their ideas in the change uh, initiative. Number four is about communicating the change, you know what that is done, and then uh, on implementation. So once the change is done, it is important to have good communication about the rollout and implementation of the change. So a time should be made for, for the implementation of changes should be made in order of the impact of the process and the changes to manage that process. For example, if your organization is a training software, the training training should be done before the software is installed to their computer. Yeah. So you need to have a timeline for change process. Yeah. So uh, for um, maybe in uh, January, February, we are going to have training, and then March, April, we are going to bring in now the computer and the software. So we need to have a timeline. An effective timeline will allow all new equipment, suppliers, and training to take place before uh, it is fully implemented. Implementing without a logical order can create frustration for those responsible for waste process. So on implementation, we are talking about something a 10 9 We need to have a 10 9 We need to know the chief of system and the uh, So we need to have a 10 9 Because without a 10 9 I think it can create frustration for those uh, responsible for waste process. And then the last um, step is follow-up. So whenever change is made, it is, it is always good to follow up after implementation. It affects how the change is working, and if they change the different the result, the uh, that will be changing. So you need to make a follow up. So you make a follow up to change if people are actually um, using the new way to do things, and then you get uh, feedback from them. How are they finding if it's a machine? How are they finding the machine? If it's a process, how are they finding the new uh, process? So when this is the case, management should acknowledge that it didn't work and yeah. So sometimes changes exceed target expectation, but there are occasions that changes just don't work as planned. So if changes don't work as planned, management should acknowledge that it didn't work and make adjustments that you desire and that is achieved. That is number one. Seven, number eight, removing barriers. So sometimes um, employees encounter barriers when implementing change. So employees will have barriers. So barriers can be other employees, other departments, inadequate training, lacking equipment, or supply needs. Sometimes management also needs to do with resistance or difficult employees. So you can actually have barriers. So barriers can be other employees, can be my department trainer. We need for the change initiative to work, you need to work with other departments and the other departments are not willing to work with you. So, uh, yeah, so that can be a barrier. Sometimes man management also needs to deal with resistance or just for employees. So, many of my friends are many of my friends are family. And every family must have a new one who is good. And then we know that they are good. So the same thing with the, the company. So at the company you have different uh, employees, you have employees that are employees. So man, uh, management also needs to deal with the resistance of different uh, employees. Uh, it is management that is supposed to ensure that employees can implement change without obstacles or resistance. So now it is the management to be to remove all the obstacles. So it is unfortunate that there are times when employees simply can't accept the change. In these layer cases, employees simply need to move on in order to successfully um, implement a needed change. These are difficult but necessary decisions.
and then the last stage is the replace. So it is important to the replace um, success along the way. And changes are made, celebrating small changes and building momentum for future changes are what makes employees more to participate in the process. So when employees understand why a change is made or are um, part of the process for planning and implementing, and implementing the change, it allows for better chance for successful implementation. So in celebrating, we are saying you do not need to wait for the whole change initiative to finish for you to replace. Uh, so we celebrate the small uh, wins. Okay? So we celebrate not small achievements. So now we're going to look at the organization change model. Organization model. So the first one is this which coach? What is that mean?
Yeah, so the model of practice, <coughs> you ask yourself a set of questions for each area in the examination. Um, yeah, it's a good, uh, you ask yourself a set of questions for each area in the examination. So the aim of this process is to review information which previously we are not aware of and subsequently expose possible areas of weakness. So below we have uh, oh yeah, the key questions that uh, the body suggests you ask for each area of the investigation. So perfect. So uh, if we look at this diagram, we say for what businesses are we in? Alright? What business are we in? So we are looking at the mission of the organization, eh? So that's the that's what we're looking at. So acknowledging the main mission and vision of an organization, and that's in itself how well the goal uh, it states itself and it is going to be stood in the same state. So before you do anything, the first thing that you have to do is to look at the business that you are in. So you are looking at the vision and the mission, especially mission, eh? So what business are we in? So after you do that, then you can say how well these goals fit with your organization competency. So this is the business we are in, right? So you look at the organization competency and see how the goals fit with the organization competency. So then you have to assess how well this goal fits with your organization competencies, may review why it is not operating at the maximum efficiency. Okay. And then number two is your structure. So on structure you ask yourself how do we divide up the work? So you know what an organization uh, structure is there, the vision of the So how do you divide a point? So you divide a point across uh, uh, some people you use to like my statement, eh? So you have a charge that they don't say anything to do with um, uh, human resources both the HR department. You have an account but anything to do with financial reports to the uh, accounts department. So, structure, how do we define our work? <coughs> so, first thing is determine the nature of your organization design. So, you look at who it goes to who and who it does what. So, this can be aligned to purposes of the organization to determine how well they are being supported. More specific questions about communication, communication pathways, for example, can then we ask to determine how efficient these processes are. Yeah, so basically we are looking at um, the reporting line, eh? the reporting system. Uh, yeah, so after structure, now we look at relationships. So on relationships, uh, the question that you have to ask yourself is how do we manage conflict? Relationship. How do you manage um, conflict? So, in a way, well, there are two, three people conflicts that are found to happen. Okay. Even in class, in the middle of the year, one hour, that is in a dynamic. In a dynamic, yes. Mm. So, conflicts will always be there. So, now that's why, uh, now we have to look at how to manage our uh, relationships. So, how do we manage conflict as well? So this section will explore team dynamics, communication, and collaboration with this the organization. A lack of communication between different partners is often an, an invisible cause of many issues. Yeah, so a lack of communication between different partners is often an, an invisible cause of many issues. So lack of communication between partners, like for example, HR and finance, uh, finance and procurement, if there is lack of communication, it can cause the sort of um, conflict. So you need to ask yourself how well are we handling the, uh, the, the conflict? 
and then you look at the world. So on the world, do instances exist? Are you the one in your career? So the instinctive mechanism is very important for the mind and for the performance and can often be a key cause in organizational issues. So the instinctive mechanism, what are the uh, the instinctives that are there in your organization? So the word is to motivation, eh? So if you are working your employees, it means you're going to have an objective and uh, employees. If you are working your employees uh, uh, to 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 embrace a certain change, it means that those employees are going to embrace the change and then the organization is going to reach its goal. Uh, uh, so this section is called in dynamic communication system. The word. So the defensive mechanism is very important to determine the employee performance and can often be a key cause of organization issues. It is not only important to assess how employees are being rewarded, but also what weight is being rewarded. The way that is being rewarded. General reward system exists, yet some employees' the achievement may be consistently low. So, this lack of information can lead to resentment and frustration. So, we need to uh, check. Uh, uh, it, is important, it is important for you to assess how employees are being rewarded, but also what weight is being rewarded. So, people should actually know who they are. The set of ways that is uh, being rewarded in the community. And then you have leadership. Leadership, the question that you have to ask yourself the leadership is is someone keeping this in balance? Is someone keeping this, all this eh, in balance? So now we are looking at leadership. Is this the job? It is the job of the organization leader to show all these elements are running for balance. So, the process is very easy to get without the leader. So, someone should keep everything in balance. So, it is the job of organization leaders to ensure all these elements are aligned and cooperate, as well as making sure the correct balance is struck between them. They are also responsible for this, resolving any internal conflicts that may be uh, occurring. Seven spots uh, suggest asking who these leaders in the organization are, and how they have got there, and how effective they are at the task they are responsible for. And then you have the support mechanism. Yeah, mechanism. So, do coordinating technologies exist? Do the mechanism, let's do connecting technologies with it. So, assessing the communication pathway, <coughs> policies, procedures, and planning strategies to create this organization processes can often be used in the organization. So, when you assess the communication pathway of policies, procedures, planning, budgeting, controlling systems, how the system, this system are handled in the organization can often review areas of inefficiency. In, in yeah, so that is the use of uh, this model. So they think that this is not going to solve your organization problem, but it's an excellent tool for starting the process. Yeah, so it is a lot of people that have to be in the of the key areas of business for which for possible weaknesses. And then we need to set the next level of data. We need to set the next level of data. We need to set the next level of data. We need to set the next level of data. We need to set the next level of data. We need to it failed. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, so we need to go Yeah.